So it's oh. one o'clock. I would like to All begin. Right. Uh, so good afternoon and good morning, dear ambassadors for peace and community leaders, brothers and sisters, coming from east and west coast and the north and south regions as well. I am Tomiko Dagan, a senior vice president of the UPF, Universal Peace Federation USA, and the, uh, the host of this program. Um, I want to thank you for coming in this 14th week of the Interfaith Associate uh, Program, uh, Pray for the Nation and the World. For those who are coming for the first time, this program is initiated by IAPD, Interfaith Association for Peace and Development. IAPD is a project organization in general consultative status with Economic and Social Council of the United Nations. We are really facing a challenging time throughout the ages. Religions have guided from darkness to light despite its shortcomings and provided us with the moral foundation and vision of the good society. I believe Faith leaders will play a unique and vital role in ending divisions, hatred, selfish ambitions, and providing wisdom, valuable lessons, the understanding, and the love of others. For this reason, I want to thank you for faith leaders for their works and the commu community leaders coming together. We are all called to contribute to peace. And now I'd like to invite our uh, moderator for this program, Archbishop Stallings, uh, uh, George Augustus Stallings Jr. He is the founder of the Imani Temple, African American uh, uh, Catholic congregation and our national chairman of IAPD. Welcome Archbishop Stallings. The floor is Thank yours. Thank you very much, Mrs. Tomiko Duggan and and greetings to all of you tuning in to our weekly Universal Peace Federation Interfaith Prayer Service. We are deeply grateful and appreciative to our religious leaders uh, representing the Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, who join us each week uh, on this uh, weekly prayer event. Uh, Zoom is the way to reach the masses, even in the midst of being socially, uh, spatially, or physically distanced, we are spiritually connected. And here to remind us of that spiritual connectivity that we have with our God, our Creator, and with each other are these distinguished and esteemed religious leaders. Our first uh, spiritual faith leader is our brother from the Jewish faith, Rabbi David Balto who is very near many of us in Washington, DC. He is a volunteer chaplain in the Department of Spiritual Care at the 912 bed inner city facility of the Washington Hospital Center. And what distinguishes uh, Rabbi Balto uh, in, his, uh, in his chaplaincy, spiritual work, is that he perhaps, it can be described as the chaplain of blessings. He loves administering blessings and recognizing uh, blessings as he goes throughout uh, his work in the Washington Hospital Center once a year. Uh, he visits all the patient units in the hospital and blesses the hands of scores of nurses. Uh, and, and those blessings are the substance of his spiritual day. In the Jewish tradition, they have this whole concept of 100 blessings a day. It's part of their ritual, their prayer ritual. Uh, they have uh, blessings for practically everything, I'm told, uh, from lifting sleep from one's eyes. I could use some of that Rabbi Balto right now, uh, to seeing beautiful objects, to the blessings of nature and for the simplest bodily functions. And, and once a year in that spirit, he offers 100 blessings throughout the hospital on a particular day in a different way, particularly to those uh, 100 associates who do not normally deal with the public to bless him. So we're here to receive a blessing from our beloved and esteemed brother, 
Rabbi David Bolto, please bless us. Thank you. Toda. Thank you so much, Archbishop and Ms. Duggan, and for bringing us together today for this vital opportunity for us to share prayer. Um, this is um, a special day in the Jewish calendar. It is the 17th of the Jewish month of Tammuz, which begins a three-week three period of mourning uh, before the saddest day of the Hebrew year, Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of Av, in which we commemorate the destruction of the temple. And so we turn inward and we think about all the sadness and grief that we suffer from. But also this is an opportunity to turn outward and reach out to others because we're all going through a period of tremendous loss, a tremendous devastation and tremendous pain. A period for us to go and find the inner strength within by reaching out to others and seeing the holiness in each other um, and recognizing God's presence. Let me give you a psalm. I look to the mountain. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He will not let you stumble. Indeed, the keeper of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your going out and your coming in from this day forth and forevermore. So as we unite today and share our words of prayer to God, let us see God's presence in each other. And by recognizing that special nature of all of us, that we are God's children, uplift our souls in prayer to the Almighty. Amen. Amen. That was awesome, Thank my beloved you. brother. I did not anticipate that you would finish so quickly. You are awesome. Thank you. Our next presenter is a beloved friend and sister of mine. She is known as an ambassador for peace. I am sure that for many of you, you have intersected with her over the years. She is an outstanding scholar, uh, a minister, one who just really enjoys engaging in a teaching ministry. I have, I have been most fortunate over the years to work closely with her in her efforts to not only speak the word of God with power and conviction, but she also has this sense of working very closely with, to elevate women. Women need to be exalted. Women need to be seen as the centerpiece of what we do in our everyday lives. She, she perhaps can best be described as a woman who is fearlessly engaged in working for the establishment of the kingdom of God, also known as the kingdom of heaven here on earth. I find that at times uh, when I need to draw that special energy and strength from her, she is always in time and on time. She is an awesome, a beautiful woman of God. Uh, Dr. Glovinia, the Reverend Dr. Glovinia Williams, uh, always has a way of showing uh, the exceptional. I remember receiving a box of cookies from her <laughs> for a Christmas present. I had no idea that uh, it was coming. <laughs> And she, she said, I've got something, I have something special for you, Archbishop. I have something special for you. And she treated me. Reverend Gupta, you can appreciate someone like, we asked for you earlier, uh, Dr. Gupta, we now see you. Uh, I, you know Dr. Glovinia Williams, and you are well aware that she has truly represented the best of us. She's also in the Washington, uh, D.C. area. And so I want to share with you a, a great scholar, a great teacher and an influencer. And when she finishes 
her remarks, I'm going to tell you something very special about her. But right now, uh, I see that my internet connection is unstable, and I'm trying to stabilize it. I don't know where to go, so I got another computer that I'm going to bring on. Let us receive now my beloved sister, my friend, representing the Christian community, the Christian faith, the Reverend Dr. Glovinia Williams. Oh, thank you so much, Archbishop, and God bless you. An honor today to uh, Mrs. Uh, Duggan. Thank you so much for this uh this invitation and i do give honor to the spirit of christ that's with us dwelling within us and ever so present with us today i also give honor to father and mother moon because i i just so honor them that they have brought us all together here today and i give lead i give honor to the leadership that is present uh, our chairman dr jenkins as well I'm so honored to just share my thoughts with you uh, today on this 14th interfaith prayer for the nation and the world. I'd just like to just take a moment and I'd like to share a scripture with you from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, verses one through six. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, son of, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I will lay sinew upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. I do believe today that all that is going on in the world, I believe that it is a time that we as believers must do what we can to help to diminish hate and revenge, actually dispel it because we know that light can destroy darkness. So I'm just asking that we think about today that as God brings our heart into focus, that we'll begin to exemplify even more love and value love and, and being able to accept our human beings. I believe that everyone wants a feeling of acceptance. And so as we want to be accepted, as we can uh, just ask God to help us to put to put newness on the bones so that we can accept others. And although there has been a long history of problems in our nation, by the grace of God, we can stop it. But we need God to provide us with direction and instructions. And I'm asking that God will attune our inner listening ear so that we can begin as leaders to hear the divine directions and the instructions, just as Abraham heard from God and he obeyed. So we are just being forced now to think through these things so that we can take down those hard structures and idols that may be in our heart that can cause division and that we reach out to souls and then reveal our divine mission that God will uplift us. And with that, I'd like to say a short prayer Father, you are the rebuilder and the restorer and the emancipator. You're the creator of vision. I ask today that you hear our prayer, and we're praying not only be on behalf of ourselves, but we're praying on behalf of your flock, even for those who have strayed. In this appointed time, we're asking for a reconnection of your precious yet powerful body of believers. Give us, even as leaders, give us wisdom and power and patience to know how to reach and to draw the flock back into the fold. Father, we thank you today. 
I ask you once again, open our inner ear that we may hear your direction and instruction so that we may plan and be empowered to carry it out. We're asking for ways to remove obstacles, Lord, to remove obstacles that are preventing us from gathering together and venturing out together to bring oneness and wholeness. Revive us, renew us, but most of all, God, fill us with your sensitive compassion and persistent patience. I pray today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah and amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much too. Dr. Govinia Williams. She's the proud mother of two sons and she is also uh, the founding president, and the CEO of the Collegiate Training Institute, which is a community-based 501c3 organization in the Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia areas. Uh, she is a powerful minister that she is noted for her ecumenism. Her, her ecumenism. She works on, very, on many different platforms with our Jewish uh, and Muslim brothers and sisters to bring together the unity that we all experience in the one God. And so I'm thankful to her for that powerful message, for that way of connecting us to our source. Thank you so much, Dr. Williams. And we take your words wholeheartedly. That and, 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 the, and the human touch that Rabbi Balto presented today. Uh, I, I, was, I felt I was seated right next to him there. He's probably at the hospital now. Or, are you at home, uh, Rabbi Balto? Or do I, are you at home or are you at the Washington Hospital Center? I'm at home. He may be on mute. Yeah. I'm You're at home right now? Yeah. Okay. I'm glad they gave you a break. They need to give you a break. <laughs> our next presenter, our final faith presenter, faith leader presenter is a distinguished brother of the Islamic faith, our beloved Imam Muhammad Majid, who is the executive Iman of the All Dulles Muslim Society Center in uh, Sterling, Virginia. So please forgive us, if you will, international uh, gatherers for this Universal Peace Federation. We just wanted to bring you all of this love and energy out of the DC, Maryland, Virginia areas today. Uh, and, and we cannot tell you how much we appreciate you trusting in us here in the area of our nation's capital to provide the spiritual leadership that is needed now. But our beloved brother, Imam Muhammad Majid, is not only a distinguished uh, Imam in the Virginia community, but he's the chairman of the International Interfaith, Interfaith Peace Corps and the former president of the Islamic Society of North America, known as ISNA. He is also the chairman of Muflum, a think tank which focuses on confronting violent extremist thought throughout, uh, through research-driven uh, preventative programs within a religious uh, paradigm. Uh, he has a long history of commitment to public service uh, through many different organizations such as the Peaceful Families Project and knowing that his reflections on the Quran and a guide for couples, re uh, reflections on uh, the Quran and change from within he has helped to organize training and workshops for imams and religious leaders domestically and internationally on the issue of the subject of violence against women, a very timely subject. Let us receive our beloved brother of the Islamic faith, our Habibi, Imam Muhammad Majid. Thank you so much, Archbishop, for uh, this wonderful and generous introduction. <laughs> it's a great pleasure to be with all of you uh, today. Uh, we need to get together to pray for the nation and to pray for the world. We need to heal the world. Um, I would like to share with you uh, two passages from the Holy Quran, and then I will uh, offer an, a, pr a prayer and explanation. Uh, the first um, passage, uh, short uh, verse from the Holy Quran, from chapter 49, verse 13, where the Quran, Holy Quran, God says, O oh, humankind, we have created you from a male and female, 
Adam and Eve, and made you into to nations, to nations and tribes, so you might know one another. And the best among you are those who are more conscious of God. The other chapter, verse, from chapter 30, from the Holy Quran, verse 23. God says, and among the signs of God in the universe is the creation and heaven of earth. The creation of heaven and earth and the variation of your languages and your colors very surely and that are signs for those who reflect. Look into those two passages from the Holy Quran that I look to all humanity as one family which very much been represented today in this Zoom. We Zoom in together as one human family. That regardless of our ethnicity, regardless of faith background, regardless of gender, we are one family. God said that over and over again in every scripture. We have to feel the pain and the suffering of every single human being on the face of the earth. As our own. We have to consider everybody as a relative of ours because at the end of the day that we are children of the Adam and Eve and all of us who are dependents of God. If I would like to offer a prayer, oh God, Give us the wisdom to understand our unity as one family. O oh God Almighty, give us the ability to hear the cry of the vulnerable and the need of the oppressed, people being oppressed around the world. O oh God Almighty, make us use our hand to help, to feed, to stand with, vulnerable and need people, needy people in the world. Oh God Almighty, give us a heart that loves everybody. Give us a heart that forgives, free of grudge, free of hatred, free of jealousy, free of envies. God Almighty, make us realize our humanity. Oh God Almighty, make us always show gratitude toward you with sharing what we have provided for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, my beloved brother, Imam Muhammad Baji. And I know that our next presenter, our next convener of the ones who have made these powerful presentations, the Reverend Dr. Michael Jenkins, who is the esteemed USA Chairman of the Universal Peace Federation, will express his profound gratitude and appreciation to each of you. But before he does that, I say to each of you, to our Jewish brother, Toda, to our beloved Christian sister, thank you. And to our Islamic brother, Shukran, you have made this a very powerful and meaningful day of prayer and reflection. Let us now receive our esteemed USA Chairman of the Universal Peace Federation, the Reverend Dr. Michael William Jenkins. Thank you so much, Archbishop Stalling, for your beautiful leadership, which brings unity and also inspiration to every one of our interfaith prayers. I wanna thank Rabbi Balto and also Sheikh Majid and also our beloved uh, great uh, Christian leader and teacher, Dr. Glovinia Williams, for your beautiful words of, of encouragement and words of love from, the, from heaven, and also your encouragement through prayer. Uh, prayer is the most powerful thing we can do as people of faith. We are all people of the book. We have Hindus here, Buddhists, and we also are on Facebook Live now with over 400 people watching in. And this is also going global now, so we'll see more and more faith leaders come together. 
but the way prayer can help change the current crisis that we're seeing all over the world, not only in America, but all over the world, the crisis of a breakdown of family, the crisis of, of pain and conflict, and also the crisis of the pandemic, which is taking lives of, of beloved family members and, and friends. Uh, how do we face this crisis? We need God. Only God can guide us through this so that we can become stronger. And by praying together, especially from our many faith traditions, we are connecting with the eternal, the unchanging, the absolute God and creator of us all. When we do that as people of the book, as people of faith, what happens is we are connecting with our divine source of life, our divine uh, creator of love, which also touches and edifies and strengthens the divinity in each one of us. And then as we pray, we also can cause the move of God in such a way that spiritual power comes to heal disease, spiritual power comes to reconcile enemies and to overcome injustice. And therefore, we believe that your prayers today will have a tremendous impact, saving countless lives all over the world, because we're really invoking the power of the divine to really bring peace and love. We want to invite you all to be part of something that's going to begin at the end of July called Peace Road. We'd like all of our interfaith leaders to help bring your spirit from your tradition, your word from God's word that comes through your tradition to the Peace Road tour that's going to begin in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and simultaneously in Point Comfort, Virginia, where the 1619 Memorial is when Africans first were brought to America in chains, and where the Plymouth Rock, where pilgrims landed for religious freedom. But we are seeing ourselves as one family. We are one family. We're all equal. And therefore, we need your, your religious power and spiritual, spiritual wisdom and your love to help make a path for those families to come together historically and also on this trip across America. We'll be on live on Facebook every single day, and we would love to have your support. So we ask you to pray for that. It's called Peace Starts With Me. And the fundamental element we're seeing that is giving us all strength and power is that we can't expect someone else to really do what we can do. We can be the peacemaker. And when we begin with our own love for God and our own heart towards other people, an act of love representing the divine can also be a essence of peace, which starts to spread. The only person I can really truly be responsible for is, is my own relationship with God and my own relationship with people. But when we set an example, as Dr. Martin Luther King did, as many rabbis did when they came to the South to support Dr. King, and many Muslim leaders who have broken open the door of love and, and welcomed us at Al-Aqsa Mosque when we went there 32 times, and we had interfaith gatherings there at, at Al-Aqsa. Uh, I see that the religious leaders, when we're touching that way, it opens up the world of peace and love. And peace and love has to come from God, and God's chosen representative is our the Hindu, Buddhists, and all the faith leaders on this this wonderful, wonderful interfaith prayer. I'd like to ask you all to join me just in a moment of silent prayer for those who are suffering from the virus, suffering from disease, and also suffering from conflict and family struggles. Let's pray for healing just silently for a moment. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. May oh, God um, multiply your blessings throughout this world. And on behalf of Mother Moon, we congratulate you for leading the way to peace. Thank you. Vice President Duggan. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Next. Jenkins. <laughs> and uh, our office, UPF USA, will extend you to join us uh, when Peace Road Group 
arrives in Washington, D.C. on August the 3rd and uh, uh, the prayers and the speeches and the wisdoms coming from faith leaders, just like I feel uh, snows going through each one of our hearts. It's keep doing is it's, uh, the water cannot stagnate, cannot stop. Let's keep praying so that the clear water will be always coming through to each one of us. So this uh, prayer will conclude and then we would like to invite you again uh, next Thursday, the 16th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Have you a good, good. afternoon Thank and you. good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you, Chapman. Uh, Baruto, thank mm -hmm. you so much, Imam Majid. I know you, we took one month to, yeah. <laughs> to make an appointment for you to come to our program. Very I'm very awesome. honored very to thank have you. you here. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us. Rabina, our sister, thank you I'm very much. Thank you. Archbishop Starling, thank you. Thank you. Bless everybody. God bless.